Hey, how's it going everyone? It's Lee Halliday, and I've been playing with the React testing library, and specifically I've been working through these examples that they have on the website, and they've got one that uses Redux and shows an example for that, how to get it up and running and whatnot. Uh, we've previously covered that in a previous video if you're interested, but I thought it would be cool to cover MobX because they don't have a MobX example here. So what I've got going on is a small little uh, React library where I'm just writing different tests to test different scenarios. And up here in counter, I've got a little component uh, that takes in um, an increment function, a decrement uh, function. These are both um, dispatch functions from, from Redux and the count property, which comes from the Redux state. And I thought we could sort of mimic this, but use MobX to do it instead. So simply we've got a button that increments the number. Uh, we've got a span that shows the current count and a decrement uh, button that decreases the number. We won't go into the whole way how uh, Redux works here and how we tested it by setting up reducers and uh, all this stuff. We're just going to go ahead and do it in MobX. So I think we can start here with, um, we'll write our our component, and then we'll move into writing the test for that. So MobX counter, so we need to import React from React, and we need to import, um, what do we need? We need inject a function from, um, from MobX, and we need observer as well, so that our component observes the changes to the stores that we are going to inject into our component. So this both comes from MobX React, and I think that's all we need from now. We'll figure it out as we go. So we're going to have a function. Um, actually, we'll do a, yeah, we'll do a function here. So this function will take in um, some props, and we are going to inject uh, what we'll call as our counter store into this component. So it's going to return, uh, we had a div with two buttons. So um, we've got one button to um, increment. So there's the plus button for that. And we've got on click, what are we going to do? We're going to call the counter store dot increment action. It's called in MobX. So here we've got our span where we're going to have a data test ID uh, so we can find it easily in our test. And it will render out the counter store dot count. Um, data, the observable that we're watching in our store. And then lastly, we'll just copy this button here that will be the decrement. So it's going to call that when clicked. Okay, what did I do this wrong? I didn't give it a name. So function mob counter. Okay, like that. And now we're going to export this. So export default. And, um, we don't have um, decorators and whatnot set up here so that we need to basically wrap using higher order um, components. Um, inject, what are the sto what's the store, the counter store we want to inject to the MobX, sorry, the mob counter component. So we're gonna say that we want to inject the counter store. And we'll have to set up that so it works later. So this returns um, a function. And in here, we can call that function and we can call observer and mob counter. Cool, like this. So the way this works, it's, it's a little bit confusing, but basically we're going to inject the counter store into this mob counter. But we also want mob counter to observe changes to the stores that we're injecting in here. So that's why in this function call here, we're telling it that we want to make it an observer. And what do we want? to be an observer, this mob counter component here. So that now that we have this hopefully set up, let's write some tests for it. So if we come over here, um, I always forget the million things we need to import. So we need to import React from React. We need to import a few functions from the React testing library. Okay, so what is it? We need to import the render function, the cleanup function, and the fire event function from React testing library. Um, I'm just gonna copy this over and explain what it does. So we're gonna import a couple um, 
uh, sort of expectation function so that we can say this DOM element contains the text whatever just to make testing a little bit easier in Jest. And we need obviously to import our mob counter. Okay, so we haven't imported anything with um, MobX yet, so let's do that. So in this test file, we're gonna actually create up uh, the counter store that we had imported into, um, so that we'd injected into our mob counter component. So to do that, we need to import a couple things. We need to import a provider from MobX React. That allows us the ability to be able to inject a store into a component. But we also need to import some things from MobX itself. From MobX. And you're seeing how I always sort of leave this empty and type the right side first. It's a little uh, trick so that when you're here, you can start typing. And because it already knows where you want to in, um, import it from, it can give you all the different examples. So we are going to import um, an observable, those are the sort of state properties in MobX that you want to make changes to. Action, those are little functions that change your state. And we want to import um, decorate so that we can decorate the MobX class or the store that we create um, because we don't have decorators set up in this, in this library. Okay, so with pretty much all the React testing library tests, um, in here, I use the after each function that comes from Jest, and I tell it to call the cleanup function from React Testing Library. So once we've got that, we're finally sort of starting to get ready to write our first test. So let's just say it renders the initial um, count. That'll be our first one here. Okay. So we're going to receive something back from rendering out our mob counter component. But with MobX, similar to Redux, you can't just render your mob counter in your test because anytime you're going to inject a MobX store into your component as a, as a prop, you need to be able to do that, you need to use a provider so that this is a, the context that is able to provide and inject the store into that component. So we need a provider, and then inside of our provider, we can put the mob counter, like this. Um, so what are we gonna get back? We are going to get back, um, we want the ability to be able to, to click based on the, the text property here, so the plus, and we also wanna be able to find this span using the data test ID. So here we've got uh, get by test ID and get by text functions that come back from uh, when you render using React Testing Library. Okay, so we've got this, but we're not quite there yet because you can't just use provider on its own. You have to pass a store as a prop to the provider. So we're going to create and define our um, MobX store here. So we'll make it, it's just a plain old class in MobX. So we will call it the, um, the counter store. And what does it have? It has the count, which will start out, let's say at zero. And then we need to define the, the functions to increment or decrement the count. So we will just define increment, which is an arrow function. And it, oops, plus plus, or we can say plus equals one, just to make it clear that we're incrementing by one. And we've got decrement, so this is the same, but it's minus by one. Okay, now we've got a class, but this is not really a mob X store yet because we need to make this count property and these increment and decrement functions into observable and actions. And to do that, since we don't have decorators set up, we are going to decorate the properties of this class. So we can say, we are going to create a decorated counter store and we will use the decorate function for that. So what are we going to decorate? We are going to decorate the counter store and then we pass an object with all the things we want to decorate. So here we want to make count 
and observable. And then we want to make the increment in action and decrement in action as well. Okay. So now that we've got this, we want to really use this decorated counter store rather than the sort of raw plain class itself, because it's got all the MobX magic built into it. So we can come into our test, and what we want to do is basically create an instance of this store. So we can call this, um, we'll call it counter store, and it's going to be a new decorated counter store. Okay, so similar name as the, the class, but it's got a lower C that differentiates it. And now we can pass in here, so the prop will be counter store, and the value will be this instance of the decorated counter store that we just created here. So now that we've given a counter store instance to the provider, we now officially have the ability to inject it into our component. So now we can run a test. So we'll do yarn test over here. And we just try to run the ones that have the word mob in it. Okay, they're passing, but haven't really tested anything yet, right? So what we'll do is we will expect and we'll use get by test ID. And Oops. So the test ID we used, I think it was called count, and we expect it to have um, the text content of this uh, element that we're finding here to have zero, because that is what uh, the initial uh, state is of the count. Now, even this is a number, though that's a number, and um, we're testing it as a string here because whenever you render um, DOM content to the screen, it always gets converted into a piece of text anyways. So now that we have that, the first test is passing and we can write maybe one more test that will increment the counter just to make sure that when we increment it, um, it will re-render the component with the new value that's in our state. So here we have uh, renders, um, after increment, we'll call it like that. So it's the same sort of thing. I guess we didn't need that. So we need to create an instance of our counter store. And if, if this got annoying, you could create a little helper function to help you create these things. Same with this render here. If it got annoying to always do the provider, pass in the counter store and whatnot, you could create a little function that does all of this for you. Um, why don't we do that just so you can, you can see how it works. So we'll say const render with store and we'll pass in the, uh, the counter store to this and it will return back all of this here. Okay. Don't need that. So now what we could simply do is call render with store, pass in the store we want, and that will make our subsequent tests a little bit easier to, to do. Okay, so we come down here, we render with store so that we can grab out the, uh, the functions get by test ID and get by text, which we will use in this text here, in this test here. So we've got two tests now, but we haven't really expected anything yet here. So the first thing we want to do is fire an event on this little increment uh, button. So we want to find it using the get by text here. We can find it using this plus, and then we can trigger the click event. So we do fire event dot click, and then we have to pass it the element we want it to click. So we use get by text, and we tell it to find the plus and click it. Okay, so once we've done that, we can now again use get by test ID. So expect get by test ID. So we'll find the count span and we will expect, uh, oh, what did I do? Two. Okay. We expect it to have text 
content. Let's just make sure it passes or it fails. So we'll say two, which shouldn't be the case. Perfect. So it did have one, even though we said two. So if we just update it to the correct value now. Perfect. So when we fire a click event on the plus button, it calls the increment action, which increments the state that triggers a re-render. Why did it trigger a re-render? Because we made this an observer. And you can see, let's test it. If we don't use the observer, it will rerun the test. You can see that even though we um, updated the, the state, the observable count, because we didn't make mob counter an observable, it wasn't watching for changes in the store. So it didn't trigger a re-render when those changes occurred. So now that it's back to being an observer, the tests all pass. And just to rehash what we've done here, we've created a little test MobX store. Um, theoretically, you could just import your real MobX store here, but say you had a massive store with 100 functions in it or tons of different observable properties, and you didn't want to involve all of that in your test, you could actually just create a mini store that contains only the state and only sort of little um, actions that are needed to be able to test the component. Because I don't think this is necessarily the place to test that your MobX store works correctly. Here you're sort of testing that it interacts well with your um, components in your React app, but it's up to you. So we created our plain object or plain class uh, counter store. We decorated it to make it um, have all the MobX capabilities baked in. We created a little render with store helper function that takes in um, an instance of the store and it wraps provider around the component we're testing and then returns the rendered version of that. So now when we get into our actual test, we can create an instance of our store, call our helper function and get back the functions from uh, React testing library. We need to find the elements and interact with them. So we tested that it is able to render uh, the zero count. And then we wrote another test that does the same stuff, but this time we're triggering a click event on the plus button. And then we make sure that it is re-rendering um, after the state changed and it should print out that the count is now one. Cool. Well, with that said, that's it for this video. Hope you enjoyed it. Um, more videos to come on, on testing, React, MobX, Redux, all of that stuff. So stay tuned. Thank you. Bye.